roll with it, you know. I'm just gonna let it go. Yeah, no one's doing be. interviews like that, bro. No one's doing interviews like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very special episode of One More Thing, where I am joined by a whole crew of people. I'm here with Militant Music, founded by Crush, um, and he's joined by some of the artists, some of the many artists who joined him on um, probably one of the biggest releases that they put out so far, um, Militant Minds, which is a charity release, which is donating, which is raising money and awareness for mental help, and we're going to find out all about that now. <laughs> So just before I say anything else, this project is uh, dedicated to Molly Sargent and um, anybody else that we've lost to complications of mental health over the years. And so rest in peace, Molly Sargent, and um, rest in peace to anybody else who we've lost to mental health. Um, it made sense to release this project just before Christmas. You know, like Christmas isn't a happy time for everybody. And um, I thought to release a project like this just before Christmas, it helps people understand that uh, men, like mental health awareness concerns everybody. And uh, it, it just made sense to have it around the winter time as well, because a lot of people are suffering around this time. A lot of people are suffering all the time, but around winter time, especially, especially yeah. around Christmas. So, yeah. Hugely in lots of different ways. So tell us all about Militant Music, really, because I think you began, um, you launched around like October 2020, I think. So you just. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, releasing, releasing music around October 2020. Um, well, it kind of started off as a media company. Um, I was documenting sort of underground bass music and hip hop culture in London, and um, but as a music journalist rather than a music promoter or uh, or like a, a producer. And um, over time, I just started getting sent quite a lot of music, and it only made sense to just kind of release the just release some tunes, and then from from there on, it just kind of started picking up and. Over the last couple of years, we've just um, been releasing quite a lot of music and it came up to this, it all culminated into this big project. And um, I ended up collabor collaborating with um, YZ and um, yeah, we put this big project together and I can't really believe that we've actually managed to pull it off, to be fair. I wanted a common ground to bring people together um, on something that literally concerns everybody no matter what music you make you know yeah definitely definitely and i think you know you join more dots than just kind of jungle and drum and bass there with militant minds you really tell a story and kind of bring everything together in that type of way you know from kind of grime to hardcore in that way and join those dots in a way like that's why i reached out to you because i love the expansiveness but the way that you made it everything makes sense within the context you provided before we even get to the, um, you know, the reasons why you brought it together and what the compilation is for. It joins yeah, so many yeah. dots. And I think that's really important really. And then that means that, you know, everybody on this call, you all make incredibly different music, but do you all feel part of something kind of, you know, a part of a label and a sound and a, and a vibe in that type of way? I think Josiah's perspective on like having a personal connection with people is 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 a really great one. I think that that really rings true. Uh, like we met very randomly, just like yeah. And oh, wow. I was like, this guy looks like he makes some cool music. I just <laughs> it's like, it was just random. I was like, I bet this guy makes some mad breakcore or something. And just <laughs> just by coincidence, he did. <laughs> Yeah, I, so I, I mean, this this album um, felt kind of timely for me in terms of like I, I sobered up towards the end of not this year, the year before, uh, and I kind of been on a well, yeah, I mean, minor in 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 comparison to a lot of other people, but a bit of a mental health journey during that time, uh, and kind of contributing to to this cause is is like it's pretty personal to me. Um, the whole like sober raving thing seems to be definitely tied into um into yeah increased awareness of mental health and i'm really happy to feed into that and yeah i mean also it's it's yeah clearly mine do really great work and have really helped a number of my friends on on a lot of occasions uh and and this really felt like the right the, the right thing to be putting putting my putting my effort into at the yeah. time yeah. What have you learned maybe about yourself or about others or about rave culture and what you do through um, going through, you know, so it's starting to go out sober and stuff like that? Well, I think one of the really uh, 
one of the one of the really um really important things that I've learned is is this this is going to sound so dumb but like the importance of really good music um like it's incredibly easy to go on a night out and um if it's not if the music is not quite for you it's very easy to kind of drink your way through that and just be like oh well like I'm having a laugh like it's good it's good night whereas actually now I think I'm a lot more um I'm a lot more picky uh I don't I don't want to yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself judgmental but I certainly have a lot I've I've got a much greater appreciation for like really good quality DJs and like going to really the night the right the right nights where I really like I, I really want I really want to engage with those with those acts. That's made me more motivated to produce better music uh, and to to kind of work harder on that. And um, the kind of the kind of uh, mental space that I inhabit in the studio is in a in a very real sense, like much closer to the feeling of being at a rave. Gives you clarity, I think, really. I yeah, mean, what's absolutely. anybody else's take on that? Is anybody else on a kind of um, a sobering journey or kind of reevaluating their relationship with certain aspects of this culture? Yeah, I, I think I'm in uh, a, a position where wherever you, ha- whenever you have like problems with mental health, you just sometimes you feel a bit of an idiot because you're like, well, yeah, obviously, because I've just been to a rave like twice and more. Do you know what I mean? So I think a lot of a lot of that is just uh, uh, that's sort of where I want to get to at some point. I'm very aware of the fact that um, you need to take ownership of the fact that you're going out and drinking a lot all the time when you're in the music industry, and that is going to actually contribute to how you feel mentally. So just taking ownership of that and not pretending that that's not part of things is is important as well. I think that's something I need yeah. to do. Yeah, definitely. What's your relationship with your mental health? How is your mental health at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I've I've had like like a lot of people have had my like problems and. Uh, again, like this year, like I've on a bit, been on a bit of a journey, and I don't know how that would compare with with other people. But but yeah, again, I think this this release was also like quite timely for me, and um, yeah, that's why I sort of proper proper back this. Um, yeah, as as men, I think the discussion um, has been a bit slower, um, really, because of all of the stupid stereotypes and stuff. But um, I certainly feel a lot more comfortable talking about my mental health uh, with my friends um, than, you know, kind of peers and things like that than I would have done, say, five years ago. He had my first friend reach out and ask for just some time to sit and speak to him recently. And that was oh, wow. really, really nice. It's the first time it's ever happened. I know people say that all the time, like, honestly, just reach out. He actually did for the first time feel comfortable enough to do that. And all he was really looking for was an ear to, to speak to. I didn't have to. I, he could literally just speak to me for a couple of hours. I'd uh, I'd nod and uh, give him some support, and that was honestly afterwards. He said, "Thank you so much for that. It really, really helped me out." Um, oh, and honestly, I think that's that's really nice. That that's a, a movement in the right direction. I think. Yeah, that's because everybody does say that, and every, I mean, I don't, if I ever say reach out, I do mean it, but nobody yeah. ever does, do they? And you yeah. almost put that little precursor there, don't you? Like, I know you probably won't, and I know you know, I, I I'm not just saying this though, but please mm-hmm. reach out. But somebody actually did. Go on, yeah. amazing. That's a that's a really good step in the right direction, and to to know that you've had a positive effect, and just giving someone the time, it's giving someone the time, isn't it? Really. Yeah, it makes you feel really nice as well. So. Yeah. How about you, Fendi? Um. Yeah, I think my personal mental health has been pretty good as of recently but one of my friends went through a very very hard time um and I was there to support him through that and I think that really hammered down the idea of the importance of 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 saying it and then also actually doing it and providing the right things and also understanding how mental health services as a whole work to help people in really really difficult situations so it sort of brought it home for me it was one of my best friends going through that but um, yeah, it was good to be able to be there for him and support him as well. And, and it really just, that was why it tied in well with the timing of the album because he was just getting a lot better when the album came out. And it was it was like things came to a culmination of a positive, positive thing. So it was great. That's great. That's great. How about you, Josiah? What's your mental health like? Or how's um, it been during these years while you've been developing militant music? Pretty, pretty good. Obviously having some ups and downs um, is just kind of, the way it has been over the last sort of few years. I decided that it made sense to put together a project like this that could um, uh, help people feel the the clarity in my mind that I do like now. And because clarity. it wasn't like, because it wasn't clarity. like, it wasn't like that for a very long time. And even, even if it's just a few people, 
reaching out to their mates after this because you know they've seen a release that well, even if they're just scrolling through their instagram just like and they've seen a oh like militant minds a mind charity album they look through this the statements of even if the artists they don't even know who they are it's people talking like men talking about their mental health like, and it can just it, it can just make you think as well about yeah things. exactly like, in a in a place where you you usually scroll through if you see something and it catches your eye mm. and because it thinks am I helping my friends enough? Am I doing this? You know what I mean, am I thinking about myself enough as well? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely, definitely. I think like, you know, we've all kind of brought up or we've touched on quite a few times now, ideas of sobriety and things like that. And it's getting rid of any crutches that you have. I, I did it with, I was morning, noon and night spliffs. I still very much enjoy THC, but in a very different way and giving up tobacco, but I couldn't make a decision without having to pop outside and having to have a spliff, even from nine o'clock in the morning. And I thought that gave me clarity. I thought that gave me tolerance. It actually was reducing my tolerance and my patience and my clarity completely. But it took me at least six months of getting out of that. And it was a long, long road. Weed isn't the answer to everything like we might have been brought up to believe, I think. Oh, my God. I've re realized that quite quickly after a few years. <laughs> but it's, but it's few everywhere, years. isn't it? In every yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 for real. But I'm trying every to song song a day. <laughs> telling me to smoke a spliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh, you're a drum and bass DJ, mate. You have to smoke weed. Yeah, you've got to like, smoke weed. You're not a real drum and bass producer if you don't smoke weed, mate. I, like... I've got to say, I feel, like, I feel like I've got a rule, which is, yeah, no ganja samples in my tunes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suffer a lot of anxiety I overthink um, and I imagine we all or every one of us on this call overthinks if you're in a creative industry you overthink um, but it's the layers and the additional layer of guilt what always gets me I had it yesterday where if your mental health gets in the way of a situation and it stops you from doing something then you have the layers of guilt on top so it's not just your mental health it's that kind of constant overthinking and I don't know if any of you experience that where you know even if things are great and everything seems fine but you're feeling shitty because you can't explain why and your brain is just your, being your enemy that day the additional layers of guilt are what really kill me because that's like you can deal with being in a shitty mood but when everything else is around you and you feel like you should be in a good mood but you just can't be is that that's where i need to talk to people that's when i reach out to friends or my partner and stuff like that because it becomes like a sort of loop of where it's like like something flowing over like this like you think oh i should be okay i should be doing better i should get up and do that and then you think and it goes back around and it does it again and then you keep going. It needs to break that cycle. And that's why I think the message is really important from the album of, of reaching out to people, but being persistent with that, not just a one off. And then you think, oh, I've done my bit and I'll I'll piss off now and it'll be all right. It's like consistently doing it. I think that's very important. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that it's really it's as you say, it's really hard to break that cycle of guilt. Um, and I think one of the hardest conversations that I've had in the past year was like telling my mom that my mental health isn't great and like that I may be like that I you know that I wasn't happy and that I might need to you know do some things differently or whatever like that was that was actually I realized in the kind of lead up to having that conversation I was way more stressed about the whole thing and it was ultimately obviously she's my mom it was fine but it's like yeah that it, it can be it can be really nerve-wracking um like owning up the idea of owning up to your own unhappiness and the idea of owning up to your own poor mental health in front of other people because you feel you feel guilty you feel like you you should you know you you, you should be all right given given everything that's going on in your life um but but ultimately no one if, if someone's going to judge you negatively for that then like they're not your friend anyway and yeah. and i personally have had nothing but positive responses from people um, Definitely. Opening, opening I think it's one way. of the cycles that we need to break from the old generation, really, and boomers and anyone who grew up kind of post war, I guess, is that kind of like, come on, chin up, it'll be all right, or count your lucky stars or stuff. Like m a lot of people I know who are in enviable, seemingly enviable positions with their careers, with their financial situation, with, you know, anything that's going great for them in their lives, but they're really deeply unhappy. 
and they can't control that. And it's not about counting your lucky blessings. I think like owning up to your own unhappiness is a perfect, you've summed it up there perfectly, man. I think one, one thing that can potentially make it worse with music is that when you're like a DJ or a producer, you're continuously trying to create almost like like a brand or like you're so conscious of how you're perceived of like trying to make it look like you're having this great time and that everything's going really well and like posting all of your highlights all the time. So I think everyone has this, an aspect of trying to mask the bad stuff that's going on. But I think when you're putting yourself out there as almost like a, like a brand or like a, like a musical figure, I think it emphasizes that even more because you're like trying to convey to everyone that, that everything's great and you're doing all this, that and the other. But yeah, I think that can definitely make things a lot worse sometimes. I think, I, I think I would say I definitely struggle with that a lot of that sort of coming back to guilt and thinking, I should be getting up right now and I should I should have made seven songs or something or I should have created a highlight reel for to put it out or something or, or done something like that and then I'll beat myself up for not doing it. But really, it, 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 I'm pressuring myself to do something and things come naturally if, if you progress at the level which you're doing it. It doesn't have to be like making 50 chains in three days or something like that, which sometimes I think I should be doing, but it can, it can wear down on you a bit, I think, of that, that sort of, it's not really pressure from anywhere else. It all comes from an internal place. But mm -hmm. being in the music industry, I think it definitely, it's it's innately there, that sort of pressure from all around to to do as well as you can do, I guess. Yeah, we spend so much time on social media, especially more so now the way how whole music scene works. We're forced to spend time on it to promote and network, that kind of things. It, it shows you, you're looking at posts more, you're comparing yourself more. And then you're then that's affecting your mental health, it's affecting everything. Um, when really, if you just start to compare against how you were doing a year ago and the releases you're doing, the music you're making, all that all that kind of stuff, uh, is when you, your perspective changes. Obviously, yeah. I, I denied that for quite a while, but then I think this this December, I like just had this realization of like I've literally I'll just realize I've been on my phone for twenty minutes, just scrolling past this endless video. <laughs> fuck knows what and I just, I just thought like fuck this I need to just like have a bit of a break from it so I just had like a social media break from like the whole of December and like, I just felt like so much more clear-headed and then you actually have like way more creative ideas because most of your free times instead of like having thoughts of like, oh they're doing this maybe I should do this you just sort of log off from all mm. of that and then you're only thinking about what you want to do what the, what are the sounds you want to pursue where are the places you want to play and it's not influenced by anything that you're seeing just purely about what you're internally wanting to do. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend that to anyone who's having a, having a bit of a, like a shocker or having a bit of a bad patch with things. Just maybe think how much of that is down to the fact that most of your free time when you're sat down is just witnessing hundreds of videos of what everyone's doing around the world and all mm. the stuff. People, It's great to see what people are doing because that's how you get inspiration, but there's a, a middle ground to be had there. And I think if you push it too far either way, then you're going to have problems. Yeah, yeah, hugely. It's knowing that line there, really. That's a great tip. I mean, how else have you found that you've managed to improve your mental health? What other tips or hacks or ways of doing things? I mean, we've kind of covered, we've thought about sobriety and cutting out or reducing social media times. Mm -hmm. um, the, for me, exercise has become paramount and like, you know, kind of daily gym sessions or almost daily have been hugely helpful. But how else um, have you guys found that you've been able to find some clarity and peace of mind? For me, I've always, and that's probably where this, this project was really uh, relevant uh, impactful for me was it's always been the music the music's kind of been an almost an escape in some ways and I find the best way to get out of a bad mood is to put on a just name drop my tune as well is to is to put on a, a disgusting mix go to the gym bang out that really loud and you'll every single time come out of the gym feeling so much better than when you went into it absolutely yeah. every single time um and I think that my first chat with with Josiah was actually about kind of that topic as well and he was asking me reached out if I had any any, any songs to contribute to the album and I was sitting on a on a song which I had made it a while back and it was titled Bad Mood I had nowhere to put it out I didn't really know the right place and it was titled Bad Mood because it represented a kind of a sound that I turn to whenever I'm feeling down or in a bad mood or I'm angry um I, it just it was such a perfect story that it, it ended up on this kind of release uh, and I, I, I hopefully people can relate to that as well when they listen to it 
what one thing for me is that I think everyone's like quite different, so this might not resonate with everyone, but I think sometimes um, it's, it, you need to like learn to be okay with not doing anything. I think a lot of the time with music, there's this pressure of like your time always needs to fulfill a function or you need to be working towards something. And I think I've, I've lived like that for so long where like I'll be sat there and I'm, oh, I need to, that's probably where you go on your phone so much because it's just the illusion that you're achieving something by being on your phone, but you're not. You're just not. And I think just being able to sit. And, not I, doing, and be fine with the fact that you're just existing and you don't need to be achieving something or doing something. I think that's something I've been trying to work towards, which I've never really thought about before this year. Yeah, that's such a good point as well. And there is this kind of culture of you know, feeling that you have to do something. I think the only time when I don't do that is when I'm out walking. But you're absolutely right. Cool. How else? What? Who, who else has got some tips? Fendi, how do you deal? How do you improve your clarity and peace of mind? Uh sort of um with the music thing as well but just add cooking to it so i just sort of i'll, I'll go downstairs obviously put some really nice ambient jungle on or something like that and i'll start making food and as i'm putting ingredients in i'm sort of sort of use it like meditation of being like putting the thoughts out of my head and sort of looking at them from a point of not not just like oh shit like, i've got to go do that tomorrow and this stress me out like just be like okay that's there I'll I'll sort that out, but right now I'm thinking about this, and then uh, you're making the food, and it's just sort of coming together. And at the end of it, I feel like I eat it, and I feel more relaxed because I've just sort of I've had a time to meditate and and sort. Of, it's, it's a bit of a weird meditation, like making a bacon sandwich or something. But like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you're you're doing something which takes your physical mind off off it, and you can really think and actually put things out in a in a proper way. So everything's not all jumbled up and just rubbish. And then obviously you've got a nice song on in the background as well. So it works yeah. well like that, I think. Yeah. That's more of a personal thing. I don't know, no, I think well, going but... through a process, going through a creative process, which is different. So you're able to focus and then you've got that. You're able to find answers when it's not, you're not staring at it bang on, but it's just there yeah. on the periphery. That's when you're able to kind of join some dots or find a solution, I think. No, Absolutely. I can totally get that. It's like it's like finding tasks that um finding tasks that you that you that, that are absorbing but that you know you can succeed at right it's like um that 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 and and you know ideally bacon sandwiches are great because you get a prize at the end as well <laughs> yeah um, exactly <laughs> very true very true <laughs> Cool. So yeah. what's what's the next step after this? I mean, this is a huge album. This is like, you know, a real kind of level up for militant music. So where where do you take this next? What's next? The um I think um maybe may a remix, a remix album, whether that is all 30 tracks, that is that would be humongous and probably take a really long time on whether it's Oh man, that's a such a good album. idea. You pass each track to the next one on the list and they have to do the remix. Yeah. That would that would be nuts. That would From be this I mean pass it, the yeah 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 pass the stems. I mean definitely something yeah, pass the stems. <laughs> definitely something along those lines of like a remix album. But I mean it is it is quite a lot of pressure from now on. Wait a minute, just stop the glitch. There we go. Take it back to the top. Yes, yeah, so I think it's quite a lot of, of pressure to sort of deliver on the, on the next project now. I think I'm definitely going to give it a break for a while to help sort of people digest the the project and sort of understand um, sort of the meaning behind it and, you know, to help people sort of find it because, you know, what the social media algorithms are like so difficult. Mm. But even if it is for a um, for a good cause, it's, you know, creative content is always being sort of pushed down the algorithms like you know, it takes people a while like everybody to, to find it. it you know it's like you know how it is anything creative right but also to give it space to breathe as well like, yeah you know, yeah exactly like releases just come out mm. they're hammered out week after week and it's that whole kind of machine like thing where you just put out this huge document which joins loads of dots has got like you know kind of 30 tracks on it and all you know all of these people on it and give it time to breathe and space and please take the time to big up loads of the people who are on it as well i, I was just like completely overwhelmed by the um just support from everybody because like i thought you know people would want to be involved with the project but like it, originally i was thinking i don't know how many tracks to put together it would it would be but it ended up being 30 seemed like the right number and just everybody was so on board with it and so supportive and it kind of gave me like hope 
in a scene where I didn't see people talking about mental health awareness like at all. And I thought that it was only um, me and a handful of my mates that were actually like sort of wanting to push this agenda um, with Guido YZ. Um, we had re- initially had a conversation together about one of our mates that was struggling and he just he just never wanted to talk about it at all. He just never felt like he could. He didn't feel like people would listen to him because, you know, he's, oh, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a grind producer. You know, I'm supposed to be a big man. I'm a man, you know, boys don't cry, that sort of thing. Yeah. And we just thought, you know, I reckon we could put together a project and with like a, a really big project together. It's it's, um, it's a shame that he couldn't be on the interview today, but he's, uh, he's busy with something else. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Of course, it would be chaos. I think if we had all thirty of you, it would be chaos. Life moves pretty fast. But tell me about just tell me about the music that you contributed to the album, each of you, please. So I've got two tunes. Uh, one of which uh, is called "Wave Hello." My my titles never really mean anything, to be honest. I don't I don't <clears throat> I, I don't know. They're mostly random words or something. Um, yeah, I uh, so I waved hello was I just really wanted. To, I really wanted to um, sample uh, one Prodigy tune. So I kind of did something with that. And I ended up basically just chopping up loads and loads of drums and sticking a ridiculous number of breaks together. Um, I don't, I kind of wish I had more meaning, more meaning to this. Um, but sometimes it doesn't need meaning, no. It's all of your music has got a real vibe, and vibe is is the meaning itself. Sometimes I think, isn't yeah, it? I guess. And I, I mean, to be fair, I remember when I was a teenager and I was getting into dance music, uh, and I I thought it was really magical how there was this whole this whole kind of world of music that that didn't have out external reference. It wasn't like a song that was about that was about a thing or like a you know a, a telling telling a story or anything. It was it was all about like creating a feeling in the moment, and that was yeah. Well, so I guess that there's my there's my excuse for lack of meaning in my music. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I just. I, I I really love that kind of classic acidy sound, um, and I really love I really love breaks. I really love jungle. I really love um, a certain amount of jump up. Uh, my bass lines are lazy, so I, I don't I don't get too much into that those distorted basses. But you know, um, and the the other one, thin walls. Uh, I was actually I kind of I kind of wanted to wanted to like make a tune out of all of those all of those old like early 2000s um hard house like the hard house leads like where they just they mash like 10 different melodic lines together to to create to create a groove and i wanted to try and do that but then kind of break beat hardcore and i don't know well you can listen to it see whether see whether i've succeeded So my track, um, I actually started quite a while ago um, and it was, it was quite nice um, that I was approached for this because I didn't really have an outlet for it and it just it just fitted fitted the uh, the brief quite well. But I um, I found this like tape on eBay. I was just like randomly on eBay and it was just this 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 tape recording of a rave that someone had just ripped um, off the radio, I think, or I, I, I don't know. And it just had like a date in Biro written on it and I just ordered it. And I was sifting through it, and I was like, "Man, this is like a sample gold mine." Just for all like the pads, breaks, and all these little, like even like the 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 the, the crackle of the tape in places is just like gold as well, and all the little vocal things. So I just from there, I just went on eBay and I started just buying loads of like these tapes um, and just ripping out little samples from them. And then I bought just like this little Walkman player here. And then from that, I can just basically feed that straight into Logic and just rip samples straight off tapes. Brilliant. Like a shoebox for the tapes over there. And it's like, it's, just, it's just proper cool because you never really know quite what's on it. It'll just be some tape from some bloke's attic that he's just getting rid of. And it'll just have like Fantasia 99 and Biro scribbled on it or something. And yeah, so I just I just spent hours going through all these tapes and building up like a like a folder of, of, of samples. And my track from that was the first track that I... Um, started using these samples so I, in the track you probably hear the bit like the um it's all a bit lo-fi but that's just because all of the pads and like the little um sort of vocal phrases and, and things like that are, fr- are from these tapes 
Yeah, I love the aspect of kind of little echoes of the past and these kind of tapes being, you know, having having another lease of life in a way, really. Like, you know, no one no one would ever imagine it when they were taping a mate off their tape, which yeah. had probably been taped off somebody else as well, and they're scribbling it on Biro that they it would be sampled 30 years in the future. Yeah, that kind I love of just it. adds to that kind of chronology or um story of the music in a way, really. Well, so, some really. of the moments in there it's quite funny, like in some of the tapes, like it'll just be like the MC will just get on the market and be like anyone dropped an inhaler please go to reception please i'm gonna try and get that <laughs> there's all sorts of weird little things that just would have been lost in time but uh i'll bring them back basically Take it back to the top. well my track my track's actually very old i think i started it about a year and a half ago and i just wanted to make something different when i started making because usually i'm i'm i've got like 160 bpm or something and this is like one three two or something ridiculous don't even know it just it, i just kept putting it down until i thought it sounded cool and i was like that sounds all right and i'll just put it in um i guess there's, it, there's not a, an innate meaning to the song like acid said it just it, it was just something that i wanted to push myself to make something a bit different and something that sort of progresses and it's quite elongated and has longevity to the track there's also a I guess it does have a bit of meaning. The, the, the voice sample in it that says, um, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, or life moves mm. pretty fast, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And I thought no, that was so that. quite... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It, was yeah. it was something quite important to me because when I made uh, that track and when I heard that sample for the first time, I was going through a bit of a hard time myself. And I thought sometimes you just need to sit down and look around you and, and realise what you've actually got and how far you've come rather than thinking about where you should be and everything. And that sort of, I guess, the meaning to the track. You could miss it. You could miss it. Go on. And then we, you've teased us then with your bad mood. Tell us a bit more about that, Apon. Yeah, so my track's titled Bad Mood. I think I wrote started it about a year and a half ago, and I think I was probably in a pretty bad mood when I was I was writing <laughs> it um, as well. Um, it, it, it's it's quite an, an angry tune, um, and it, it kind of samples Flow Down, which is pretty topical at the moment. It mm. seems he just released Rumble with Skrillex, but I started it ages ago, um, and yeah, it kind of symbolises the the angry sound that I turn to when I have, I'm in a bad mood, and I go and listen to some really angry drum bass, and it, it makes me feel much better. Um, the, the kind of the build up, the vocal, it's it's kind of a, a, a song for the dance floor that that. The build up starts very quiet and it gets to the drop. And at a point in the drop, I've shifted the vocal forwards and he's actually shouting and he shouts as the drop hits. And then I have basically used my angriest bass synth I could possibly find. Um, and that carries the song through along with a kind of ominous arpeggio in the background as well. Also, oh. music musicality. <laughs> this will, this project will live forever. And that's what I wanted to create. And um, hopefully less people will feel like they are alone. And maybe less people will end up like my friend Molly. Oh, and you know, that's, and that's the, the, the short of it. Oh, it might be blunt, but that's how it is. And you know, m m mental health awareness does concern literally everybody, so. Yeah, yeah. That's I, couldn't, I couldn't do the that's whole the interview heart. without mentioning something about Molly, you know? Massively. So, oh yeah. man, rest in peace. Yeah, um, re rest in yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah. It's been and two. It's been two years, but you know, with this release, I think that we we've definitely done a very good thing here. <laughs> Initially, Militant Music started off as just sort of a media platform, and um, we've done a lot of free downloads over the last two years. But I wanted to um, put out a project that would really sort of stand the test of time and something that would last for a really long time because you know it's been so great working with all these artists over the years um releasing free downloads but um you know all of us at militant music we wanted to put a project together with a really meaningful cause that will um will be something that people will look back on from years to come there's a few people that I wouldn't have been able to do this release without and um, that singularity of helping with the promo. That's um, Stephen Sidney for he painted the main image of the cover art. Um, Guido YZ for um, sort of initially uh, just collaborating with me on this project. 
and all, all of the 34 artists involved. It's a monumental project and um, a huge collaborative project that um, I would we wouldn't have been able to do um, without all of the people working together. And um, yeah, yeah, that's um, there's just so many different people. The, the list would go on and on and on. But um, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't do an interview about this project without some special mentions. Life moves pretty fast, Life moves pretty fast, pretty fast.